presentation will be on STEM response and the FOPE team model. At first, I'll give you a system overview and then discuss with you the steady state operating curve and how we made it, followed by a discussion of the parameters of the system and how we calculated them. Um, and then we'll go over the operating range that we were given by a customer and how we broke that down into separate ranges and then finally go over the transfer function. Now the voltage system it has a single input and that is a 5 volt power motor and our input we put in a certain percent of that power. Well, and then also a one a single output that is the voltage going to load lights. Now for the steady state operation we have a constant input and that yields a, it's, uh, after a bit of time a steady output and the transfer function we use step inputs which an initial steady input followed by a step, a defined step in the input and these steps can be up or down. Now, we were given by our customer an intended output range of 10 to 70 volts and according to our experiments that yielded an input operating range of between 66 and 82 percent of the power from our input. Now within that operating range we divided it into a middle, lower, and upper range for more specific analysis. Here are the ranges we divided that into between 66 and 70 input percent to the lower range, the middle range between 70 to 76 percent, and then the upper range from 76 to 82 percent. Again, there are the numbers for each of the ranges. And we ran tests at intervals of 2% to break it up. So we would have three separate experiments within each range. And for each of those, at each percent, we took steps up 2% and then also down 2%. Now here is the transfer function, which would be useful for our system to determine what the output would be, to predict actually what the output would be given an input. K here is the gain of the system, T0 is the dead time, and then tau, the time constant. Now initially we used a very tedious analysis for determining these parameters. As you can see, delta C is the change in the, in the output of, this, of the curve. Delta M is the change in the input. So the gain was determined by dividing change in output over change in input, and then to determine the T naught, that is the dead time, take the slope of the steeper slope right there, as you can see, of the curve, and the time at which it crosses the output. No, excuse me, the in, not the output, yeah. The initial output. The initial output, thank you. Um, that time that, that is lapsed from the step to where that intersection occurs is the dead time. And tau is calculated where 63%, 63.2% of the output, of the difference in output intersects that check, the uh, initial output. And then subtract the dead time from that, and that gives you tau. Now similarly, we do this for the step down. And again, you just go by the steeper slope and the input and the output. You come up with sometimes different numbers. Now, our parameters that we calculated using that analysis were very different. Between the step up and the step down, there are different dead time, a different uh, time constant, and different uh, K gain value for this lower uh, range. There was a very high uncertainty with the step up and the gain. Now, for the middle range, we also had different dead time and different gain, but the tau's of them were similar. As you can see, the time constant, 0.23 and 0.22 seconds, very similar in the middle range. Similarly, there are different gains with the upper for the step up and the step down, but there are different tau's and similar time uh, dead times. Then we use an Excel FOPDT model and it is much simpler uh, using Excel and uh, simplifies everything, but we came up with the same model, similar uh, analysis, but just in a less tedious manner. Now, 
our uh, parameters summed up here, you can see there is a great variance uh, between the step up and the step down and among the ranges for the gain value. It is evident, however, that the step up for each of them displays a higher gain than the step down. The dead time is, they're all very different. It's very difficult to notice any trends in that. Um, but that's where we display them, so we'll take it. Now for the time constant, there's a, a huge variance. Uh, the lower range, is about 9.5, but now these, the next slide I'll zoom in to show, to see those a little better. Now as you can see, it is from the, each of the uh, step ups does display a higher time constant than the step down. In conclusion, there's a higher gain for each of the step ups, but different uh, gain values between, like within each range for step up and step down, and different dead times between up and down um, and the dead times vary among each range. And there's a higher time constant with step ups, um, but a different time constant between each up and down. And uh, quoting a famous professor, there's a lot of variability with this system that we don't understand. Are there any questions? Uh, do you have to read that on that piece of paper? Yeah, I wrote it down. Thank you. 
dead time. Uh, as you can see, there's the input multiplied by the, uh, the input function multiplied by the transfer function, with k being gain and t is zero being a dead time and tau being a first order time constant. And these are the parameters which I use to model our 10 to 40 range. Okay, here's a typical model step response. As you can see in red, that is the actual experimental data that we have collected. And uh, on top of that, in purple, little X's, that is our actual model. And for this one, this is a, this is a run A. We come up with a gain of 17.2, time constant of 0.23, and a dead time of 0.1. It's a fairly, fairly constant throughout the system. Uh, this is the 10 to 40 response. These are all, all the different uh, runs that we did, A, B, and C. And uh, you can see that we get an average gain of 17.3 plus or minus 2 tenths. And also we get a dead time of 0.1 with a percent error of uh, or variability of 0 0.01 and a time constant over here, tau of 0.22 plus or minus 0.03. All right. Here's our gain for each of our, uh, our runs, but the up lower, which is from 10 to 40, down to lower, which is 40 to 10, and so on, 40 to 70, and 70 to 100. You see there's very, there's the error bar on the top, you see there's very little, very little in that. Same goes for the dead time, although there is a little bit more in the middle. There's a little bit more variability, and first order time constant. See, it's uh, practically non-existent on the upper end from the uh, 100, uh, 70 to 100 range and the 100 to 70 range. So the gain of our system, we found an overall value to be 17.44. And dead time of 0.13 seconds and a first order time constant of 0 0.20. In conclusion, for this system, we found that for the 1040 range, it's 17.45, uh, time constant 0.13, tau 0.19, 40 to 70, 17.47, 0 0.15 for the time constant, or I'm sorry, the dead time, and the time constant of 0 0.18. And you see there's the one for 71 I don't know if them all <laughs> for you. But that is for both the up and down steps. So basically the same. There's our overall system averages. Falls right in line the rest of it. Any questions?